This week in the field, paying it forward for your fellow photographers. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In The Field. Thanks for joining me today. Before I get into today's topic, I have a favor to ask, a free way that you can help support this show. Number one is subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you did. Those little uh, blips on the subscribe count really let me know that you're getting value out of these videos, you're enjoying them, and that encourages me to come back and make new ones. Second is you're already a subscriber, thanks very much. Please share this with uh, your local camera club or your favorite Facebook group or any group of your fellow photographers you think would enjoy this and I'd really appreciate it. Now today's topic, um, I'm going back to Death Valley on this one and uh, it's on my mind because as this goes up on the interwebs, it's uh, I'm a day out from heading out for a workshop out there. So back in December, uh, I did some scouting like I always do for workshops. You go out and scout locations. And one of the places that I went to do scouting was Cotton Ball Basin. Now this, um, this place has been um, kind of, it's almost like a unicorn to me. It's been elusive. I have not ever encountered and found the, the really, um, I don't know, engaging patterns in this area of Death Valley. And uh, well, as it turns out, this visit was no different, but uh, there is also um, a deeper reason behind why I, uh, I didn't, didn't find things. So let me show you some of the footage here, and then I'll come back and talk more about this idea. So the interesting thing is there is quite a bit of water down here at the Cotton Ball Basin. Now that's making it challenging for me because I'm not going to go marching out across this um, you know, for a couple of reasons. One is it's uh, nasty, salty, you know, yucky water, but also I don't want to disturb the ecosystem. I mean, this is, you know, one of the tenets of Death Valley is, you know, leave no trace. So I'm going to you know, kind of backtrack along the edge of where the, the um, I guess the cotton balls are, these little tufts of, of grass, and see about isolating a couple of them against what is this white saltiness and see about uh, setting something up photographically that way. At this area, the basin's a little better. A little more room to work. Some of these uh, little spots of grass are isolated. I'll do a few photos here, and uh, I would love to be able to get out to some of those darker masses, but I, again, I'm just not going to go marching across the, uh, the, the wet plains here. Uh, I, I think I will drive a little farther and uh, try another access point in the basin after getting a few shots here. I'm going to use this little tuft of grass as a, the anchor of my foreground and got some nice lines cutting through the scene, you know, leading off to the mountain in the background. Camera setup is very simple, f16, 16, 16 millimeter. I'd show you the screen, but uh, there's so much glare out here right now, you're just not going to be able to see anything. But yeah, that's the main setup and I'm getting everything in the frame from here up to about there. So I stayed very close to the edge of the uh, the basin. I'll call it the shoreline of the basin, you know, this, this salt beach that was there before getting out into the, the muddier areas where more of the runoff was really just kind of soaking into the land. I didn't want to traipse around there leaving, you know, a bunch of boot prints. And, uh, you know, as I learned from talking to the rangers the next day, um, they really appreciated that. You know, fundamentally, they tell me the less people they have marching out around there, the better when you have those types of conditions. You know, it's very, very muddy and, uh, you know, it's uh, somewhat damaging to the ecosystem. A beautiful place to photograph, uh, but uh, they really said, you know, do it in, you know, drier conditions when you're not going to be leaving these, not permanent, but certainly longer lasting impressions on the landscape. And so that's what I did. And that's exactly what my workshop group is going to do too. Well, the tip of the week is to be an ambassador for photography. So when I'm out shooting, I certainly represent myself, but I also think about representing landscape photographers as a group in general. I'm going to be respectful of the land. I'm going to obey any types of signs that are there and you know, just not cause grief for the next set of photographers. And so that's my encouragement to everyone is you know, be a good ambassador. You're paying it forward to the next set of photographers that are going to visit that location. And, you know, it, chances are you're the next set of photographers visiting some of the locations. So hopefully the previous folks that visited where you're going next were good ambassadors. And that will do it for this week's In the Field. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, again, please share this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've got photo questions, I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me through my website. You can leave comments on the video below. 
Uh, any, any way to let me know you're getting value out of this would be appreciated. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport and happy shooting.